Heya, welcome to the channel. I'm Wooly, and this is Book Fair, the Attack Pier. What? Alright, so starting off today's video with some mining. Here, we pick up level 60. With that rounded skill, we get one step closer to a tidy stats page. But, I think it's time to mix things up. In the last video, we achieved 75 hit points, allowing us to access more powerful jewelry like the Ring of Suffering. This is an item I've been excited for, as it opens up a few new pieces of content. The first one that comes to mind is the Fight Caves. I'm still trying to work out exactly how to do that with our current stats though. This is honestly where some networking would probably help. I bet that someone like Rendy could probably pull this off. Oh no, someone else has summoned me, what do you need? Rendy? Uh, what happened? <sighs> Are you a ghost? Well, I'm actually- Oh no. Rendy's dead. I summoned him, not on purpose, and now he's a ghost. I'm not- I can't believe what I've done. Without Rendy, this will mean the end of the Defense Pier series. Not to mention- No, 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 I'm not dead. Oh. Okay. I'm using sort of a modified communication orb here. What? Never mind, those details aren't very important. Look, I can effectively take control of your actions for a singular attempt at the fight caves. Whoa. Now, to replace your items and coordinates. Well, a little off the mark, but I think that'll work. Sweet Guthix, what's happening? Luckily, we will have access to some key items, like the ZGS and the Ring of Suffering. Oh yeah, and this Colossal Blade. It's a good thing you're an attack peer. Well, it looks like we're getting right into it. So what now? So this is a level 22 bat. These things only max 4s, but whenever they do hit you for a 0 even, they like to lower your prayer points, so we're going to avoid these at all costs, flinch them, try and get away from them at all possible times, because I like my prayer points, I don't want them to go down. Sounds easy enough. The next NPC here is a level 45 blob. This is another melee NPC. Whenever you hit it with melee, unfortunately, which we'll be using this whole time, it likes to recoil one damage back to you. So we do have a fat stack of purple sweets here in the inventory, thank god. That way I can actually out eat its recoils, even though I'm going to be smacking it with melee all the time. Oh yeah, by the way, when this thing dies, it splits into two individual level 22s that are like smaller cloned versions of it. So we'll have to kill those as well, but luckily those don't recoil us when we hit on them. By the way, check out this colossal blade here. This thing is overpowered as hell. I mean, I've got one strength and I'm able to hit tens upwards of, I think, 20s towards the end of this video, you'll see. As the larger the NPCs are, the larger base max hit you can have on these. As well, I'll be using the ZGS, which can do massive damage if you're near your opponent whenever using a special attack. So whenever I have special attack, I'll be using that. Alright, back to the NPC list. Next, we have the level 90, otherwise known as the range. This thing uses projectiles on you because, well, it's a range NPC. 
but also if I get up close and personal to this NPC, it can melee me, which I want to avoid at all costs because it can hit 13s and these add up on my one defense and, or sorry, your one defense. So I'm going to be flinching this NPC as it attacks me with its projectile range between its attacks with melee before it can get a melee hit off on me because I'll be back away from it every time it does use the next attack. As well, I can take all of these NPCs to the flinch spots west. Those are northwest of the west rock and southwest of the west rock. As long as the NPCs are diagonal to you southeast and northeast respectively to each location. There are some other safe spots for some of the melee NPCs you'll be seeing me using throughout this video. And speaking of melee NPCs, that's next. A level 180 melee NPC. Next in line, this guy heals once he's under half HP, so I gotta get him to a safe spot or I have to use this book here with a full inventory and a red click. We'll get into that later um, to actually start lowering his HP down past under half HP or else he's just gonna keep healing himself back up and I can't really out DPS those heals. So I want to make sure this guy is safe spotted under half HP and flinch him about every 9 to 10 game ticks and that way he's going to be out of combat with me technically and never have a chance to heal himself although I'll still be doing damage and eventually get him down to zero health. The next NPC, the last NPC, or actually the last besides Jad, is going to be the Ketzak, the level 360 mage. Once again, this uses projectiles like the lower level 90 ranger, but it's going to be using a mage projectile and it has a melee attack that can hit up to a 50 on you if you are in its melee zone. So once again, I'm going to be prioritizing standing back between attacks, so he's always going to be using his projectile attack on me being the mage with my mage protect and never being inside his melee combat zone by actually attacking him between his attacks. Now the main strategy here is separate out every single NPC away from one another because you want to handle one NPC at a time as it's the easiest strategy and you won't have to be changing your prayers like I do sometimes anyways, but you don't have to do that. You want to look at the waves basically on the wiki. I choose rotation number two and you can see the set spawn for every NPC throughout the waves on the wiki based on what rotation you're using. Rotation number two isn't very important, but I'm just used to it, so that's what I'm using. You can use literally any rotation here, as long as you know how to block NPCs behind rocks and look at their spawn points. You also want to learn how to lure some of these NPCs outside of the rocks while keeping them in melee zone, like I do with the Italy rock or the eastern rock here, and I pull them, hug the wall, and now I can still attack this NPC in its melee zone. As long as I can keep these NPCs separated out and in melee zone so I can actually hit them between attacks, well, that's going to be perfect. There are a couple waves where I do have to use my Ring of Suffering here and tick eat some of the attacks from some of these NPCs because I just can't get into the melee zone because there's so many NPCs spawned everywhere in these waves. You don't absolutely have to do this, but if you don't want to alternate your prayers a lot, well this is going to be the best method. I've included this clip to showcase another method Rendy used when faced with multiple ranged attackers. Here, he effectively flinches off of the mage's blind spot to finish the ranger. Afterwards, he's free to fight the mage one on one. I do tend to pray flick in this cape, even though I do have higher prayer and possibly don't need to. I'm trying to conserve prayer points as much as possible, and once again, I'm trying to avoid the level 22 bats as much as possible. I also use this book a lot here, and why I use this is because I have a full inventory. When I read it, it's a quest item. It'll spawn a scroll under my body. Now, whenever you red X an item like this scroll, and you do it inside of an NPC's body, the one you last attacked, well, that NPC will become stuck with an interface like I do here. So a lot of the time with the 180 melees when they're under half HP, I like to use this book and then red X underneath them and flinch them every nine to 10 ticks so they don't regenerate their HP. As well, I sometimes use this book for other NPCs like the level 22s if I don't wanna take damage and lose prayer points. This isn't necessary, but it's just a tool I like to utilize to keep my prayer points up as much as possible and not sit there bashing the level 180 forever, hoping I get a lot of consecutive good hits to out DPS's health regen.
So yeah, basically you'll just be separating out- wait, I will be separating out every NPC individually, and then I will be attacking them between their projectile attacks if they are a range or mage. And for the ones I can't reach, well I'll be recoiling them down, but there are very far and few between that I actually have to do this with. One thing that I wanted to mention was his use of the Abyssal Dagger. When beginning a fight with the mages, he would often prioritize using the dagger special attack for the poison application. This was to ensure the poison would be assisting as soon as possible. After that, the Colossal Blade takes over, only stepping aside for Ancient God Sword specs as they are available. Wow, we're on Jad already. Okay, well, I basically just have to have the healers behind Jad, not healing him, and then get him in a melee zone and switch to melee protection between his other two attacks because you cannot actually have any clearance for the melee protection switch. So you always want to switch back to melee protect after he uses range or mage when you're in the melee zone of this NPC. Or you can just take him to one of those western flinch spots I mentioned earlier and just flinch him between every 9 and 10 game ticks and never get hit as long as you deal with the healers and once again relure them behind Jad or kill them or do something with them. I don't know, it's honestly not that complicated. Well actually listening to all this back it does sound kind of complicated but for me it's not complicated for you. Good luck. Good luck out there because you're gonna need it. And um, yeah by the way did I mention I'm going to have to drop this cape when I'm done? Uh, sorry. If I keep this cape, I'm probably going to get permanently banned for providing services for people even though you're not paying me. And uh, yeah, I don't trust Jagex one bit. So we're going to drop this cape here and I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me do this and someday maybe you'll do it yourself. Probably not though, but we'll, we'll see. I also wanted to include most of the fight with Chad. This was primarily to show how he went about the fight, his prayers and switches, along with the managing of the healers. I won't have too much to say here, so if this part doesn't interest you, skip forward about one minute. And he's done it. Jad is down. And with that, the fire cape has been unlocked.
This run in the fight caves with an attack pier took just over five and a half hours. I was honestly surprised to see how few supplies were used. Rendy only needed a few hundred sweets and a handful of restores to complete it. Like he said earlier though, we won't be keeping this cape. While we did get permission to do this video ahead of time, I don't want to chance anything happening to either his or my own accounts. But before we lose it, we're going to gain access to more wreck. I don't know that I'll use this area, but it's a nice check mark on the completionist list. With that out of the way, it's time to hand in our brand new cape. Never lucky. But now things are back to normal. I'm super excited to see the fight caves on an attack pier and hopefully I'll be able to earn my own one day. If you wanted to try it on your own attack pier, the time to beat is 5 hours and 33 minutes. Good luck! Thanks for watching all the way through. I just wanted to give you a quick update. As you might have noticed, the uploads have once again gone missing. I'd recently returned to classes, so real life took priority. However, I do have a new series coming very soon following an Ultimate Iron Man. In this new series, I'd like to try to use a longer format than my usual 8 to 12 minutes. I'd love to hear your feedback on the new style as they release. Stay safe out there. Stay you.